and welcome to Langham, or if you're already here, welcome to Heritage Langham. I'm Heather Payton, one of the Heritage Langham team. If you're not from here, I should tell you first a bit about Langham and Heritage Langham. So, we live in a village of some 800 people on the northern bank of the Clevi Estuary in Pembrokeshire. And really, it's a village with ideas well above its station. Last year, for example, we produced a full-scale opera written by a local composer, and we're currently in the throes of turning it into a concert to be staged at St David's Cathedral and later in Cardiff. So, Heritage Langham, the short description is that it's an almost half-million-pound project aiming not only to restore our medieval church but also to uncover Langham's long-hidden Flemish roots. We have some exciting news on that front, but first some basics. Pam Hunt is chair of Heritage Langham. It started about three and a half years ago when the then rector uh, called me up to the rectory to show me the latest quinquennial inspection of the building, which basically said you need to spend £250,000 on urgent repairs or this building will have to be closed. She said, how on earth are we going to find that money? And she she mentioned Heritage Lottery and I said, yeah, that's the logical one to go to. And I said, but I think the effigies, which were of the de la Roche family, who were the lords of the manor of Langham, and I said, I think combining that, research into that and the renovation work might just swing it through. I went to see Heritage Lottery and they seemed to agree with me. And lo and behold, nine months later, we heard that we'd got development money and that development money paid for an architect to come in, do drawings, and we put in plans for underfloor heating, a comfortable toilet, comfortable seating. I mean, everything you would expect in a modern church, yet retain the medieval character of this building built 830 years ago. The applications went off in the autumn of 2014 and uh, just before Christmas 2014 we heard from Heritage Lottery that they were giving us a grant of well over 300,000 towards the project. So what's going to happen to the church? Because you had had a huge bill or the possibility, the potential of an absolutely massive bill. Is that all going to be covered? Yes, it is now. I mean, we spent the last year looking for other funding and we've now managed to raise over £430,000. And that will cover everything, including the archaeology, the DNA uh, research, the um, visits to the National Archive and to the British Library, Lambeth Palace, these sort of places, and um, also a a little trip to Belgium to talk to experts over there. We want to know who these people were. Tell me um, just really, really briefly about the Flemings. I mean, was was it known that they'd been here in Langham? Well, to me, it appeared people did know, but it was a forgotten story. You know, it's written in in ancient manuscripts. William of Malmesbury, Caradoc of Flancarven both wrote about this Fleming settlement in Pembrokeshire. But um, no one had actually sort of said, well, what exactly happened? And the archaeology, how's that going to work? Well, the, because it's a medieval church, the archaeologists will be present when the builders start pulling the place apart. They have to be there keeping a watching brief. Um, we hope that we will find some things as they excavate the floor to put in the underfloor heating. And we've agreed with the archaeologists that if we can identify the position of some of the De La Roche graves, we hope to be able to dig down to them and record the grave covers. There'll be a stone over it with perhaps some text on it. We don't know. The other thing you mentioned was the DNA. Now, this is actually quite an exciting element. Yeah, it is very exciting. It came, it was almost an afterthought when we put in the bid, Um, but I'd watched a programme on the television about uh, uh, someone tracing their DNA, and I thought, my God, if we could find half a dozen men in the village who have been here for at least 250 years, or their male ancestors have been, and in an unbroken line, then maybe, just maybe, we might get an indication of whether there's Flemish genes in their system or whatever. And you've now had the go-ahead to actually start all of this. Yes, we have. There, there's a small hold-up at the moment with Cadu, so the building work is delayed about a month, but everything else is now can now happen. Thanks, Pam. Pam Hunt, Chair of Heritage Langham, and tons more on what we're doing in later editions. So these Flemings, who were they and what did they contribute to Langham? Liz Rawlings is our research officer. Flemings first came to uh, Pembrokeshire 
and the rest of Britain in several waves. And the most um, important one was obviously with William I, William the Conqueror, when he came over in 1066. The Flemings were very, very important because his wife Matilda was actually a Flemish princess. And they came to Pembrokeshire uh, under the orders of the king. The Flemish were very problematic to Henry I in particular. Um, so Henry decided to send them away from the seat of power, London, as far away as he possibly could. So he gave them lands in Pembrokeshire and in Northumberland. But they were also then used to um, assist the Normans in quelling the Welsh. And uh, that was a, a very bloody ethnic cleansing. The first recorded Fleming that we have in Pembrokeshire, um, which has an influence on, on us in Langham, is Godbert, or as he was known, Godbertus Flandrensis, Godbert the Fleming. Godbert was born in Pembroke Castle, we believe. The, all the references seem to point to him being born around about the time of 1094, 1096. The family, like all Flemish, wanted to ape the Normans who were their liege lords and their presumably betters, so they decided to adopt many of the mannerisms and customs of the Normans and that included having surnames. And they took the surname de la Roche, we believe, because they actually built a castle on in Roach, which is known as Roach Castle. So Roach, de la Roche, is of the rock. The family were very warlike. Godbert himself bought more lands in and around Langham. But he had two sons, Rodbert and Richard. Richard was the elder. And he actually went to Ireland. We don't know why, but the assumption can be to look for lands, to look for possibly place to plunder, lands to steal, whatever. But he was definitely a very warlike man. And uh, he came back to Pembrokeshire and later joined Strongbow when the main invasion force of Ireland took place. And his younger brother, Rodbert, actually did go along as well. Liz Rawlings of Heritage Langham, and we'll have more on the history in later podcasts. Bear that Irish connection in mind, because we'll be hearing more about it in a minute. Now, Pam mentioned the DNA element of the project, and earlier this year, we teamed up with the leading Welsh media company, Green Bay, who were making a series called DNA Cymru, aiming to identify the genetic origins of Welsh males. I say males because, as you may know, you get more information from tracing the male line back through history. Anyway, the DNA Cymru project involved testing the DNA of as many Welsh chaps as they could, at which our ears pricked up. Could they identify Flemish genes in Langham men who could already trace their male line back through 200 years or more? Well, we found several likely volunteers through newspaper appeals and word of mouth, including some with surnames that may have Flemish origins, including Stevens, Brock, Cousins, and, of course, Roach, as mentioned by Liz. Back in May, seven men received containers into which they unceremoniously spat. There's nothing dignified about DNA testing and sent them off for analysis. Five months later, back came the results and I was there for the grand unveiling. Well, this is Pembroke Castle, a fitting backdrop to what we're doing tonight because it's a place that Langham's Flemish ancestors would have known well. Anyway, fast forward a few centuries, and tonight the results of the DNA tests are being revealed. The volunteers are all inside, and the crew from Green Bay have set up a big screen where they'll show analysis of each of the results from Dr. Jim Wilson, a medical geneticist from Edinburgh University. Now, they know the results, we don't, but what we're hoping for is a clear link 
after Flemish ancestry, for example, a haplogroup or combination of genetic markers that's been found to be common in men from the Low Countries. Worst would be that no one has any Flemish genes. Oh, and it's raining. I hope that's not an omen. Anyway, I'm going inside. Thank you for waiting for so long. But well, all the volunteers are sitting on benches waiting expectantly. The DNA Cymru producer director, Winford Jones, is telling them what will happen next. They're to be called up one by one to be presented with the findings and to hear Jim's analysis. It's a tense moment. Kevin Brock, you're first up. Um, we tested your Y chromosome and you belong to a haplogroup called S145. This is very common in the British Isles. Within this group, you belong to a subtype called S474. And we looked uh, in the Netherlands and no men in the Netherlands carry this type. In fact, it's only ever been seen in Britain and Ireland. So it's really rather unlikely that this, this your male Father's 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 line is Flemish in origin. My name's Kevin Brock. I've just been told that i very unlikely or not likely at all to have any Flemish in me. So I'm, I'm Welsh. Do you mind? I'm delighted. <laughs> well, that's great, but not exactly what we hoped. My name is Glyn Morgan. I used to live in Langham once upon a time, but I left here many, many years ago. I come back often. Um, and just had the results. And it's uh, like a cousin of mine, Kevin Brock, uh, we are within 2% of um, Welsh DNA. So it seems as though we are with Langham and Langham stuck and we're proud to stay here as well. So you're a, you're a Welshman, not a Fleming. I certainly am. I'm very proud of the fact, yes. So two proud Welshmen, no Flemings. Fingers crossed. My name's Steve Richards um, and they've told me that I'm basically a Heinz 57 varieties, I think. Looking at this, it goes all the way back to Africa, then out to India and Southeast Asia and up into Switzerland and northern Germany, which means I'm from everywhere. So basically human? Yeah, I think so. Well, I think I am. My name is Malcolm Goodrich and uh, they told me that uh, they weren't certain where my DNA came from originally. Uh, there'd have to be more tests run. It's very interesting. It is interesting, but are you a bit disappointed that they couldn't be more certain? Yes, I was expecting a little bit more information out of it. Well, this is really not going well, is it? My name is Graham Stevens, and from what I remember what they told me, I, I think I've got 0.2% Welsh, 0.4% English, and 0.8% Germanic, so North Germany. So that gives me some indication of you know, origins, maybe maybe it's Anglo-Saxon, maybe it's come across with the Anglo-Saxons, it may be pre-Norman in, which, in, in, in that case. Um, they do find the same DNA groups in the Low Countries, so again, it could be Anglo-Saxon there. Well, that's a bit better, geographically at least. Only a couple more to go now, back to Jim. Peter Cousins. Now you belong to quite a different group. No Welsh men have ever been seen with this type. Um, about 0.7% of English men. However, it's at 1.2% uh, in the Netherlands. I think your type, Peter, is the one with the highest chance of having a, a Flemish background, that your patri line, your father line, may indeed be Flemish. Peter Cousins, and they said there is a chance that uh, there's a Flemish ancestry, so it's quite interesting. Do you feel Flemish? <laughs> well, no more than when I arrived tonight. <laughs> so. so, at last, we have a probable or possible Fleming. Extraordinary, when you think how far that genetic link goes back. But they saved the best until last. Quite a bombshell, in fact. I'll let you into a little secret. Jim recorded this bit on Skype only on the day of the event after he'd done further research. Just listen to this. Okay, next up is Norman Roach. Now, you belong to a very unusual type. You belong uh, to a group that's sometimes known as V12, and there's only one place in the world where it's common, and that's in North East Africa, specifically in Southern Egypt. So, Norman's male ancestor was not Welsh or even Flemish, but from southern Egypt. 
And because this haplogroup is not seen in the Near East or indeed England or Wales, it probably reached Western Europe via a Mediterranean crossing, probably by one person in the past few thousand years. Wouldn't it be amazing to know who that was? But although it's extraordinary enough, there is more. I believe that you were interested in whether uh, your Y chromosome matched that uh, of the Roche family. And we've been able to um, find data uh, about the Y chromosomes of a number of men um, called Roche, uh, principally of Irish descent. And a large number of these men actually all match one another. So we feel that we've identified the, the major genetic descent cluster of the Roche family, men from Cork and Wexford and other places in Ireland. And when we look to compare your chromosome to their chromosome, they match. So this shows that the, the Roche family in Pembrokeshire match the Roche family in Ireland and that you descend from these people. You all carry this incredibly rare haplotype that appears deep in the past to have come from what's now Egypt. So let's put this in context. DNA Cymru producer Winford Jones started off as a sceptic as to whether it would be possible to find and identify Flemish genes given the small library of possibilities. But he really thinks we've cracked it. The one result that was surprising was, the, uh, was Norman Roach's result. First of all, because he's got such an unusual haplogroup. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm not a geneticist, I'm not a scientist, but seeing their reaction to this and, and hearing their explanation and the excitement in their voices when they talked about you know, the, the phylogeography of this particular uh, haplogroup E marker with its very strong focus in southern Egypt. So how it reaches Europe and ends up in Pembrokeshire is, is just, we don't know. It's, you know, any course of events could have happened which led to it come to Pembrokeshire. But once it was here, what's happened then, of course, is that the De La Roches, they established themselves here, then they, they went to Ireland, uh, and they have descendants in Ireland. And many of those descendants who are living in Ireland, and I presume in America as well, have um, looked at the genetic markers of their own DNA. Um, there is, I think, as I understand it, there's one group of Roches that stands out as, as having, um, or one, one group of, 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 of Roches with, with, with the same marker is a particularly prominent one. So we can assume that, that because it's so prominent, that is what people would describe as the, the modal Roche haplotype or whatever, uh, and Norman Roche is, is part of that lineage. You've established a strong connection between the originators or the, the founders of, 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 of Roche Castle and, and of, of, of this Norman area of, of Pembrokeshire, um, and um, you've found one of their living descendants. Fantastic. Winford Jones of Green Bay Media. In fact, Norman wasn't able to be with us at Pembroke Castle, but... Graham Stevens caught up with him later and showed him the results. Well, uh, incredible. Uh, although my father always said that there was a link to Ireland, yeah. uh, he didn't have uh, any proof or anything, but uh, somewhere along the family line, uh, it must have been handed down. No, it's incredible. So potentially then, well, probably more than potentially, you can trace your lineage right the way back to the De La Roche family, and, and before them, maybe even Godibert, because Godibert became, the children were Fitz Godibert, and then Fitz Godibert De La Roche, and then simply De La Roche. So, so the Roche, the Roche bit, links you with yeah. the, some of the original settlers of Langham. How does that make you feel? Good, because I've got a strong affinity with the village, uh, also. Uh, Yes, uh, it makes you feel humble in a way, really, you know. Members of the family have gone back about 200 years back, but we've never gone like this, no. DNA, all the rest of it. Well, this one is astounding. And, yeah. and, and, and indeed, Roach Castle, because, you know, it, it was um, one of the De La Roches that actually built Roach Castle, so your ancestral home may be a castle. Yes, well, uh, it's astounding. Norman Roach digesting some extraordinary news about his ancestors. Perhaps our next step should involve catching up with Norman's Irish cousins. 
If you want to see more on the small screen, Green Bay's DNA Cymru series was scheduled to start on S4C on November the 22nd at 8pm with English subtitled repeats starting at 10.45pm on Monday the 28th and there are four episodes or you can download them of course from S4C's website. We'll be back next month with more from Heritage Langham, including the tapestry designed by local children and being sewn by local people that's likely to rival even the one at Bayeux, well, fingers crossed. Plus, the latest discoveries we've made in research, what the archaeologists are hoping to find at the church, and our plans for a joyous celebration of Lady Joanna's and Sir David Roach's wedding 700 years ago, could be your chance to dress up as a medieval Fleming. Join us then.